thank you for the introduction and I'd like to say that I feel very privileged and honoured to be a finalist in this particular segment before. Uh, I've heard today a number of times the importance of farmers in land care. Well, the catchments that I've been in contact and working with are practically all farmers and farmers' families. And that, that, that does us uh, proud, I think, that farmers really care for their land. I want to acknowledge too that those who have worked very hard behind the scenes, particularly in making it possible for me to be present here today. I uh, mentioned the Rockland Land Care Group and the Chairman's present here tonight. And I mentioned those workers behind the scenes that we've heard the Little River Group talk about. Our uh, uh, support officers. I wouldn't be here on this occasion if it wasn't for the tremendous work that they did behind the scene researching my background. I didn't know they were doing it for quite a while, but by gee, they did a thorough job, I can tell you. And uh, so uh, good was the work that they did that they scared the heck out of me when they, I heard that they were nominating me for the Hawks the pre catchment Individual Award. And then again, the Lachlan Catchment by the other group. Two groups, Helen Ward, Mary Bonnet, and Nero de Croker. Well, I take my hats off to you. Terrific workers, and land care would be the poor of that too, Greg. Early in the 1960s, 65, I bought property in the Rossland area. Uh, there was a road running fair between these two properties and uh, uh, that proved to be a bonus in finish. And this country, and it's why I mentioned those two catchments, uh, the Hawkesbury to Burn and the Lachlan, because I was sitting right at the top of, of the Great Dividing Range on rich agricultural country, pretty devoid of trees. But anyhow, I set about improving the country because it was uh, run down badly. I subdivided it into 30 acre blocks or thereabouts and planted uh, trees on all fences, which means those blocks were totally enclosed by trees and shrubs. And uh, I established deep perennial pastures, and in those early years, back in the 60s, and 70s, uh, there wasn't much talk of carbon, but now I know that those deep perennial pastures store carbon, so that's a real plus. And so did the remnant pa patches that have been fenced in. And I must mention the uh, uh, wetlands that were established there. When the Russell Land Care Group were established many years later, uh, there were some land uh, owners in close proximity to where I lived that didn't show a lot of interest in land care. But because of the fact that those trees that were planted back in the 60s and 70s are now quite large trees, probably that big round, uh, it made a huge difference to the area. And while it wasn't intended as a show place or anything like that, it did attract attention and plenty of comment. And now those people that uh, didn't involve themselves in land cut care are doing good work and adopting those same land care practice that we did probably 20 years before. And uh, the other thing is, I think that because I've recently sold, I think they could see the added value to a property by developing it inland with land care aims. And uh, 
it, uh, it also shows very clearly too that your stock will do a lot better if you treat the country properly, such as uh, enclosing it with trees. I was often asked why was I involved, and we heard it here tonight, but uh, you hear it quite regularly. Why involved? Well, I grew up in those early years when you could see the advantage of biodiversity. The animals, the quails, uh, the, the bird life, even lizards on the ground, there were dozens of them, you know, different varieties, but now hardly any. So it's the loss we've had. And let me reinforce what I'm saying. In uh, about the year 2000, N. Gelly uh, did a survey in our area and they found that there was a 92% loss of habitat. Uh, you know, that just, uh, uh, and the tree cover was gone and we uh, could see quite clearly that uh, there had to be something done and that's why we started connecting with corridors and the like to the remnant. But just consider this, there are, are tw since European settlement, there are 27 mammal species or subspecies lost. Plenty of reason for doing something about it. There are 23 birds and four frogs also gone. And you know, that's pretty awful type of situation they have developed in a country as good as this. There are also, and this is seen as on Saturday's uh, uh, Threatened Species Day, I'm not, not talking about Parliament either. Uh, there are 1,500 mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians, as, and plants, now threatened, now listed as threatened under government legislation. So the need's very clear. We need to act quickly and effectively to halt this loss of biodiversity. And we can make a difference, and we are making a difference. The Roslyn Land Care have a high point that you can look out across the country that's been improved and connected with corridors. And it really gladdens the heart to see what's happened over the last 15 or 20 years. And if we look forward to the next 15 or 20, then we can say then we've done something really well worthwhile. In 1978, I was elected to local government, and that really opened the door to uh, introducing land care and connecting, as the theme says, uh, to communities over a much wider area. Uh, for a start, they were a bit reluctant to be very involved, but then I happened to be able to come in contact with Sue Wakefield, Greening Australia. She was a state coordinator of trees on farms, and I managed to get her to come over and talk to the local government, and then we followed that up with a bus trip, a full day bus trip. And that was highly successful and it opened the eyes of the councillors. Doreen Wheelwright, well known in the Lockland Lock region, was a wonderful addition to council too and gave a lot of support. And we were able to uh, obtain an office in the town. Uh, we were able to get a member to occupy that office. Uh, and a really good uh, outreach and land care and we were able to establish in the first years uh, when I was the chair of that meeting some 20 plus land care groups which was pretty exceptional at the time. I was also very fortunate to be able to uh, chair the Noxious Weeds Committee for some 15 years in local government and that was a real asset uh, in being able to help the land care groups uh, reach out and 
help them in controlling their noxious weeds. The main ones being serrated tussock, which is one of the national problems that we have existing at the present time. Uh, St John's Ward and Blackbridge, and I know there are a few others shown up since then too. One of the other things in uh, reaching out as the theme for the day says was when the Anglican Church asked me if I'd be involved in uh, a tree planting exercise on their property which consisted of about 4,500 acres. I agreed to do this and we used to plant between 1,500 and 2,000 trees a day and uh, that was people coming from all over the diocese, some between 60 and 80 uh, each day. I was also involved with the local catchment committee in uh, helping establish and some of the more important things that we envisage in the future. As I said, we're making a difference and you've heard tonight of the Wapper program. Well, that's one of the things that we believe in very much. It's uh, planting blocks uh, that give you, give the bird life in particular, but animals too, a, a safe home to rest as they come through the corridors. Well worth uh, the effort and uh, an area we're going to push. We're also working with school children, school children. We've been doing that for a number of years, and I think it's my favourite project. Uh, working with LHPA, Livestock Health and Pest Authority, the schools, two schools and about 60 kids, and we plant and they really enjoy the program that we put before them. Uh, Nikki Tors too has been doing bird watching and the last tour showed without any doubt at all that there are a wide number of birds coming back and we uh, saw several that were endangered. The uh, sacred kingfisher, for one of the first times we've spotted uh, The black cat tree, tree key, creeper, uh, is really endangered and we're unable to spot that too. Uh, the boobook owl, even though you don't spot them too much in the daytime, uh, uh, are now barking at night in these uh, tree areas that we've been working with. We're seeing plant push in the waters where they haven't been seen before. And uh, water rats and wild water rats like the field to you. They're not the dirty rats that worry us about buildings and so forth. They're there in the water and I only saw one the other day in the head of the uh, uh, river stream that uh, leads into Pijar Dam. So beautiful looking black rat with an, uh, an orange on it. And then I must uh, mention a little area that I think is terribly important, and this is finally. Uh, our chairman sent out a survey only recently, and there are about a dozen different things that uh, the, the uh, land care members were asked to reply to. And, uh, the one that I replied to was this, and it was a clear majority. Looking at the balance between pasture and animal production whilst maintaining strong environmental values. You see, what we're doing is looking to re-energise the Land Care Committee. We've got to find ways to keep them interested, and they have been all this time, and this is probably the reason we look what we can do to give them the energy to continue. And in this one, what it's doing is giving a bit more to the landowner and talking about pastures and establishing species, super and all that kind of thing, and uh, then uh, looking at the environmental aspects of it. And what's plan is to talk to the other land care groups and try and involve them in this. We're reaching out to the wide area and we think it's going to be a great success. Okay, thank you.